History of Aviation podcast with Derek Beeler, David Rowe, and David Gorman. Oh, a microphony and a phony at the mic. Hello and welcome to the History of Aviation podcast. I'm Derek Beeler. Thanks for making us a part of your day. Today, I'm joined by Mr. David Rowe and Dave Gorman for this bonus episode. The reason for this bonus episode, you might be asking yourself, well, our own Dave Gorman just returned from the Great American Air Show in Smyrna, Tennessee, and is here to tell us about it. Dave? Well, hey, guys. Good to see you. I, uh, I, I hate that I was the only one of the three that were able to make it over to the show, but it was uh, uh, a great show. It was one that there was a lot of discussion ahead of time about the lineup and the prices. And, I mean, all those things are a part of air shows in, in 2023. I mean, you don't get everything you want. Uh, and sometimes it's more expensive than you want. You always have a choice to not go. Uh, it stinks to let that be a part of, uh, of why you don't go, but I certainly get it. And I've made that decision about some shows myself, but, uh, this one worked out where I was able to go with a couple of buddies, shout out to Bruce, uh, and, uh, Darren who, uh, were with me when I went up to Louisville about two months ago. So it was good to, to, uh, be standing there watching airplanes again uh, at this air show. Uh, Darren was a big help with camera settings as well. I still need help with that. He was uh, um, he was helpful with reminding me to, to adjust for you know props from jets and vice versa. You would think I would remember that, but it was a big help. I also want to give a shout out to a kid named Keegan. I believe that was his name. I apologize if I missed it, but hopefully he's listening. Keegan is uh, about 11 or 12 years old and he and his mom were looking at an airplane and she saw my shirt. I was wearing the History of Aviation podcast shirt that are brand new and uh, available soon for our listeners. Um, And she asked me about the podcast and and, uh, I started talking to her and talking to her son. He just got back from uh, the aviation camp down in Huntsville and uh, oh, was wow. telling me, mom was telling me about a high school in Middle Tennessee that has this incredible aviation program uh, that they have as part of their STEM programming at the high school. And he's hoping that he'll be able to get into that. And I'm going to tell you, if he's thinking about that already, getting, going into sixth grade, I'm, I'm pretty sure he's going to do what it takes to get there in a couple more years. So good luck to you, my mm-hmm. friend, and, and check in with us. I hope you're listening. The show itself uh, featured the Blue Angels to close out the show, but we had a nice smattering of, of some other uh, uh, high-performance aircraft. We had uh, some things like Mustangs, and uh, uh, there were two Mustangs that were scheduled to fly. One of them had a mechanical and was not able to get up in the air, but uh, Quicksilver was there along with the uh, F4U4 Corsair that uh, Jim Tobel flies. Uh, always great to see those guys. Uh, although they didn't do a, a class of 45 performance, they both were, were there doing other things. Um, <clears throat> there was a, a, a classic jet, a T-33 that that flew. Um, Skip Collier was flying, and that's a, that's a fantastic uh, aircraft to see. Um, put out a tremendous display, lots and lots of nice uh, back and forth passes, and uh, got to see... The top, the side, the bottom of that plane, as he really gave it a, a good ringing out in the skies. Uh, the Sky Raider, um, known as Bad News, was there. And so uh, going back to, to uh, Vietnam era, uh, great looking Sky Raider. Um, I love Lieutenant America, uh, and it's my, my favorite. But Bad News is, is tricked out with all kinds of uh, yeah. uh, ordnance on the wings, and it really looks good. Um, that way and uh, lots of nice passes even a uh, a 360 uh, kind of like a minimum radius turn that the pilot performed which was cool to see in a sky raider mm-hmm. so uh, some some good ringing out of those planes uh, the navy was represented by a couple of, of uh, f-35 lightning twos and uh, those you know one guy put on a heck of a, a show and then the other guy joined up with the corsair and they did a Navy Heritage flight. And, uh, you know, you, you realize that uh, just how controllable those F-35s are. They, they really look great in the sky. Tough shooting conditions with a, yeah. a plane that has kind of a couple of different shades of gray. And the sky was a couple of different shades of gray and then sunny. And so lots, again, of uh, adjusting literally on the fly. 
uh, trying to stay a little bit ahead of the uh, photography curve there. But a great, great uh, performance by the F-35s. The F-22, I'm sorry, but it just steals the show. There's nothing like a, a well-flown F-22. And these, these guys live for the show. Uh, this thing just you know, falls like a leaf. It turns on a dime. Uh, it, it looks great um, with its uh, passes, great performance and everything. Um, did not fire flares like the one we saw up in Louisville, uh, but it, it still was, was a fantastic performance. Uh, the weapons bay pass that they do. Now, the F-35 does a, a similar pass where they open their weapons bay, but it just it's a great-looking airplane. They did a, the F-22 Cobra maneuver, which I, I'm not positive I'd seen before. Uh, but, you know, this that that uh, if you're familiar with that move as it's coming across, it uh, yanks back on a stick and, and climbs quickly and kind of ends up flattening out at the top of the climb and looks a little bit like the shape of a cobra um, that's getting ready to strike. So uh, impressive, impressive display. And I'll tell you, the blues were uh, they had a few issues. Uh, they put on a great performance, but. Uh, they had a maintenance issue with plane number two. Apparently, their heads-up display was not quite, uh, just wasn't communicating. And I was listening to the uh, uh, pilot talk, and they and weren't talking a whole lot on, on the public channels on the scanner, but I could hear them discussing that it was a issue with the, uh, the heads-up display. They replaced that, and then they tried to do their takeoff after about a 15-minute delay. And uh, uh, first two planes got up without any difficulty. The next two planes are right behind them in the takeoff formation. Mm -hmm. And uh, they didn't take off. And, uh, you know, they, they mentioned about, uh, you see the smoke on and the smoke will go off when they go in the afterburner. And that's, that's true. The smoke uh, that the Blue Angels put out there turns off during the afterburner, uh, when they put their afterburners on for takeoff it didn't turn off. And I was like, why is that smoke still out? And it really worried me. You know, there's that awful history in Smyrna with the loss of a Blue Angel and a pilot um, seven years ago. And uh, I was like, oh, no, no, no. There was, you know, we couldn't tell what happened, but I, I heard them talking over the radio about a rejected takeoff. And apparently, I guess they continued to have issues with the HUD the uh, the other pilot did not he he did not take off either. I guess they decided it wasn't safe to try to do that with them both so close on the runway, for one to take off and the other one not to. Um, the opposing solos both got up in the air, uh, but for a while we had uh, just two plain diamond formations, uh, <laughs> and uh, the the opposing solos doing their thing. So they were doing their their performance as best as they could with just the two planes. Then uh, airplane number four took off and joined up. So we had three plane for a while. And then the pilot of uh, aircraft two traded out with uh, and, and got into the two seater aircraft number seven and took off maybe about 10 minutes after things got going and then joined up for proper four plane diamond and six plane formation flying. So, uh, they salvaged it, and you know, I, I kept thinking, "Oh, well, this is kind of cool." I'm getting pictures of two plane and, and three plane formations when it usually is four, so a little bit different. Mm -hmm. uh, and apparently, you know, safety was uh, never compromised; it was all good. Um, and they put on a great show. The crowd was really appreciative. So, uh, bravo to the uh, organizers at the uh, Great Tennessee Air Show. They put on a great show. I wish I could say the same for their plan for getting everybody out of the show afterwards. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, like, like I say, the most dangerous part of an air show is trying to get there and then trying to get home. And patience was uh, required. You know, I, I heard that there were people who were in line for two hours to get out. And I don't know what the solution is, but, uh, you know, they, they knew they were sold out on Saturday. They had people waving you in. And not so many people waving you out on the way out. So uh, better luck next time. It's a great show. Well, I definitely. I'm glad I went to. If, if you go to an air show like that and you know it's going to be that crowded, uh, I work at Bristol Motor Speedway and I have told people this for years. We can get, you know, over 100,000 people at a race. You're going to have to wait after the event. 
There's just too many mm-hmm. people, yep. too many cars. You're going to wait. You're so a go in with the attitude. Okay, I'm going to wait. Bring a cooler. Bring some food. Bring something to drink. Sit at your car. Have a snack. Talk. Reminisce. Talk to some people <laughs> near you. Just wait. Don't be in such a hurry to get home because you're not going to get home. Trust me, I've got 20 years of experience at this. You are not leaving in a hurry. Now, (laughs) granted, they could have had a few more people out there and directing traffic and organizing it better. And Bristol Motor Speedway has that down to an art. Uh, We have people one way, go, 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 and we get you out as quick as possible. But at the same time, you've got to change your attitude when you go to these things. Bring something to eat and drink, some chairs, sit, relax, and you will get home just fine. (laughs) See, even the dog agrees with me. (laughs) She just noticed somebody walking by here. Well, I, I, you know, the, uh, a reminder with the, uh, with this air show, the folks who put it on, they do this every two years if, if they can. So they don't have the practice that, uh, other events do other venues do that do this on a pretty regular basis, but, uh, spot on with the comment about packing a cooler so that while you're waiting, you can get, you can get some water. Um, a lot of the vendors were, were sold out or they'd stopped selling and there were still a lot of people there to, uh, uh, shoot, um, uh, statics. You know, there were probably some people waiting until way after hours to get departures, <clears throat> Um, I, right, I wouldn't know who you're talking about there. No yeah. clue. No, yeah. none whatsoever. <laughs> no, but, uh, you know, you just, you're right. You just got to plan ahead and factor in some, uh, some wait time and you can't get upset about it. It was a great show. And, uh, oh my gosh, I almost forgot the opening ceremonies. Uh, they had a guy come in with the American flag and the POW flag. They had a Tennessee flag. I guess they had three or four jumpers. One of the jumpers came right over our head and just barely coming in from kind of behind the crowd, uh, barely cleared the fence and got his feet down. And and he didn't really get he didn't stick the landing. We'll put it that way. He didn't get hurt, but he was he was uh, came over my head by about, oh, 12 feet. (laughs) I wish my pictures were better, but I was trying to decide, am I in trouble here? (laughs) (laughs) I need to duck (laughs) Yeah, I wish I'd have been there to video that. That would have been something to see. Well, it would have been. It would have been. I'm sure somebody's got it on video. That's for sure. But uh, definitely uh, glad to glad to uh, have a show, an air show in Tennessee this year that I could attend. Uh, they had uh, uh, representatives from um, the Music City Squadron. They were showing off their new SNJ that they have. Um, and, uh, you know, trying to let folks know about it. I think they have a fly in. Uh, a, a, an event that they're doing. It's not an air show, but they're doing an event over there in the Lebanon area uh, later on this month. I think the 24th or something is is when they're doing that, which looks pretty interesting. And they're you know trying to get uh, folks interested in joining their squadron over there. They had uh, they had a, a growler on the ground that you could walk right by, and I took some pictures of the. The pods on the wings, a thing that is a signature feature of the Growler, sets it apart from other FA-18s. Uh, some great merch. Man, oh, man, I, I spent about $45 in about seven minutes. Uh, <laughs> I thought, Wait a minute, what am I doing? But there, there, was, uh, there was some some really cool shirts and, and um, challenge coins and, and koozies and great things, you know. So it's a good show. They had stuff for kids and uh stuff for big kids too so um next time hopefully you guys will be able to get over there too hopefully for sure uh dave gorman thanks uh thanks for joining us today for this bonus episode and telling us all about the uh, great american air show i'm sure you i I know you took some pictures and videos tell folks where they can uh, go check those out well, my Instagram at uh, underscore it's Dave Gorman on Instagram. Uh, I will have pictures there soon. I put a few up, but I've got a bunch more okay. that I'm taking. Still sorting through them. Uh, shot a couple of videos, and you know they're they're cell phone videos, so they're not anywhere near as good as you can find there. But uh, Gormania uh, is the name of my uh, YouTube channel, so you can uh, search them up there and check them out. And uh, I may, depending on how I feel about them, I might share them 
and attach them as a link to some of these uh, on our other social medias for the History of Aviation podcast. David Rowe, uh, go over your social media with us. Uh, Aerofile.com, A-E-R-O-W-E-P-H-I-L-E.com. Uh, I've got a whole bunch of stuff from the uh, recent Commemorative Air Force visit to Tri-Cities Airport. I uh, just uh, finished everything up this weekend, and I will have a lot of videos of uh, Fifi, B-29 Super Fortress, Diamond Lil, B-24, uh, P-51 Mustang Gunfighter, and several other smaller planes. Uh, you will have lots to watch uh, very shortly. Come check me out. Good deal, guys. I enjoyed it. Our first bonus episode. There you go. Yeah. And yeah, hopefully the, next time I'll be there at the uh, air show to do be a part of that. There you go. Me too, for sure. And the History of Aviation podcast, we are located everywhere we're on. We have our own website. We're on Facebook. We're on Instagram. We're on Twitter. Uh, you can check out all those links below. Go check out our YouTube page as well. We got some great videos and some shorts on there for that. So for David Rowe, Dave Gorman, I'm Derek Beeler. Thanks for listening to the History of Aviation podcast. of Aviation Podcast with Derek Beeler, David Rowe, and David Gorman. <laughs>